Kaguya season two. Let's see that scheming principal lurking in the background. One of these days. I feel like it will be Miyuki who, who does it. Meanwhile, in the 1920s. What is with this? There's like this weird subtext of this girl. <laughs> this is a lurking girl. Did I say that right? Who is it? I'm not the most observant person. Is this the girl that's just been lurking randomly? Like she just pops up now and then? I'm guessing a fan of Miyuki. And, and then cinematic opening. Is this the school hallway guarded by lasers? And then goes to the shell. <laughs> Guarantee you this is for something really mundane. <laughs> it's like his diary or something like that. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's really inappropriate. More scheming. Is it like a love potion or something like that? Hayasaki, I want to defend. Through poison. <laughs> poison or some kind of love potion. There it is. Oh, it's a sleep agent. Oh, we just saw that. <laughs> oh no, it's evil! No, 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 no. No, no, no. I was like a caffeine addict. This is even worse than the, the creepy scene. <laughs> this is the worst thing she's ever done. You don't mess with the guy's coffee, man. One of the things I like most about Miyuki is the fact that the guy puts a lot on his shoulders and does it in a way that is noble. You know, like he's top of his grade. He has a student council. More importantly, he has a job. It seems like he has a, a pretty substantial commute. And it's not just that he's not complaining about it. It's that he's connected to it. You know, he feels like he couldn't not do it. The guy's really engaged in his life. And in that way, he's great. You know, but I, I know that there's sacrifice in that somewhere. And it's probably sleep. I've heard it said that there's sleep, social life, and success, and you can only pick two. And I think there's some truth in there somewhere. I mean, you can add other things like relationships, good grades if you're in school or whatever, but the fundamental premise is the same. It's really tough to have it all. I mean, I think it's possible to have a good balance, but not at first. For all those things to be really good and sort of in place and in a groove, there has to be setup time. And Miyuki's a kid, and uh, well, he's got success and he's got a vibrant social life, so Kavi ends up sort of being the cheat code there. I will say for me, one thing I know about myself is I really value sleep, and I just feel like I need more sleep than than most people. You know, I know people who can sleep five hours or six hours a night, and they like wake up instantly. Those are not my base stats, but I can do it really effectively. You know, I can live on almost no sleep, I've learned, if I'm excited about my life. You know, if I'm excited about my day, that's sort of the key. I mean, I can have nothing on my plate and need more sleep and have it be harder to wake up than when I have a lot on my plate, if I'm not feeling great about what I have to look forward to waking up. Like, that's so key. So with Miyuki having this much going on and <laughs> obviously relying on coffee, this is a pretty dark move. Season two starting off with a dark start. Hayasaki, aye, she's sort of dangerous. Right. To what And Are we reading his diary? Reading his diary. What are we measuring? What are we measuring? Whoops. What is this thing? What is this hair tie? What were we measuring though? Let's be pure-minded and think she's measuring him to buy him a sweater. Knit her, knit him a sweater? We got an eye episode. To give her some credit, I think that the bath time segment shed a little bit of light on her character and paints a pretty clear picture that, you know, she just really cares about Kaguya and she can see how difficult Kaguya makes her own life. And so she's trying to force the issue. And her means might not be the best or most pure, but it's not like there's no heart there. You're not supposed to go in there. <laughs> well done. You don't say. Seems like they're doing well in their relationship. This guy. I can try. I got my eyes on you. Wow, wow. <laughs> this escalated things like a million percent. She's not above just, you know, poisoning people and taking away their caffeine, which is the same thing. Taking a break. Kaguya sama. She's just stuck in the same position. This this sound again. This spish spish. <laughs> but what were we measuring? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. The student council haven't reached adulthood. It's the same guy? I highly doubt this is a, a male phenomenon, but I definitely do feel it's true that a, a key experience can be a game changer. Especially one where you feel like you really pulled out a victory, you know, where you meet or exceed your own expectations. And one of the cool things about it is it can happen pretty quick. It's pretty obvious that things can turn around for the worse really quickly, but even though it it's probably more rare and harder. I have experienced things turning around for the better really fast as well. It doesn't take all that much. And another cool thing about it is, like things going wrong, things going well have
have their own sort of momentum. You know, you get a small win, kind of sets you up for the next perhaps bigger one. One piece of advice a, a good friend of mine gave me a long time ago is to not have my barometer for action be things that are too grand without intermediate steps. So like if where you want to be is sort of out of reach, you know, you sort of trace a path there where you can reduce it to a series of steps that are more manageable. And it's pretty amazing how that works better than it might seem at first. This is going to be a brag, like a humble brag. It's funny because he's like so far ahead of these two now. That's what I was saying. Yeah, this is a humble brag. I, I feel it coming too. It's going to be something like, when do you know you're having too much sex? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not quite there, but... Precisely. He just came in with that energy. Oh, no, they're worried. They're worried for what it means for them. This kind of thing is going to activate all of their insecurities about where they are because they have that weird pressure. That girl again! Who is she? <laughs> He's just glowing. That was a great day, though. Oh, now he's just being condescending. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he's sort of insufferable right now. You need to come get your man. <laughs> Would it really matter, though? What does it matter to them? I was about to say you want to leave them alone in there with a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it, it gets creepy though if you're right. Yeah, but they're gonna be in on this. <laughs> I mean, maybe if his first dates were real. You do this to yourself. Oh my! Yeah, all right. Well. <laughs> He's holding on to that glimmer of hope. It spares his own ego. Oh. oh, I thought the train meant something totally different. <laughs> oh no! What she just face planted? It doesn't matter if he did. <laughs> Does it matter though? Oh damn. That's really cute in intention. I don't know how convincing it is. You can paddle left or right, but you're always flowing downstream, if you know what I mean. You just hope that the way she thinks, she recognizes what's actually a value, which is not his external behavior, but the fact that he's trying to please her. Speaking of love is war, there's so much loss, you know, so much wasted energy, and people misreading that. Everyone has different love languages as it's called, or like just different ways they would like to receive love and different ways they express love. But to the individual, unless you're really paying attention, it's easy to forget that and think that if people aren't expressing love the exact way you want to receive it, that it means it's not there. And so it's a really nice skill, it's nice ability, or nice focus, I guess, to be able to look at the person's heart and intention and to see if certain fundamental things are there, like trustworthiness, effort, honesty, the ability to sacrifice to a healthy degree. Seems like they actually have a pretty good relationship. I definitely get the jealousy and insecurity that that scene provoked in the student council members, but it's one of those things that with perspective, it's kind of like, so what? I've heard that one of the best ways to grow in life is to reflect on death. I got another one that feels like death, which is reflecting on the fact that all the things you're afraid are happening are happening. Like, it's all happening. People are ahead of you. The life you desperately want to have but feel incapable of having, some people have it. And the sooner one can accept that, the easier it becomes to accept two other things which I think are important in that whole equation. One is that it doesn't bring them the satisfaction that you think it would bring you. I mean, everyone has challenges. No one is immune. I mean, people might be immune in moments, but life is life. The person with the super hot girlfriend or boyfriend or all the money that he or she could ever spend has other miseries. It's just a fact. But that's not really what the comforting thought is because other people's misery doesn't make your life better, right? Even though people will try to pass that off as what you should focus on. And it's like, gee, thanks for letting me know that life just inherently sucks. But the more important thought is that it's just a sign that you want something and you can get what you want. And as soon as you get it, it won't matter what other people are doing. And like I said at the start of this video, it takes a lot less than you think. You know, it takes one or two key victories to start that, that cycle. They have entered their own game. Kage wants to get married. Maybe we should, you know, be able to talk honestly first. All right, where's the, where's the rig? How is this game rigged in her favor? That was, a, that was a fast one. That was a fast skit. 
Yeah, that's that's really sweet. I was about to say, you gotta at least humor her. Oh no, a little bit too far. Too much. They're gonna get hooked. Whoops. Death. <laughs> she says, smiling. Whoops. It's a dangerous world in this game. Oh, so it's Persona 3 and 4. Maybe 5. I don't know yet. This game actually looks really fun. A little fortune telling element in this, too. Antrophobia card. Unlike life. <笑>広金は外弁カード効果で一流大学に進学。かぐやはラッキーマスを多く引き当て、現在所持金トップ。いや、センスオブビングベリーマッチウィズ Bubbling under the surface. Poor Chica, an innocent victim. I mean, I've flipped over a Monopoly board or two, so I get how real this could be. <laughs> oh, insult to injury. And you gotta attend their wedding. I'm gonna watch them kiss. I thought it was real money this whole time. <laughs> She's willing to trade it all for a fake marriage. Look, this is great! It's fantastic! Congratulations on your, your corporate success. <laughs> oh no, nine children! Ooh. Oh no, at, that age, at this ripe old age? How could you, Miyuki? The worst. And that is th that is game over. Thanks for playing, everyone. Maybe Kagoya could get the marriage card now and swoop in. Love in the time of cholera style. I wonder what Miyuki's nine children are going to think about this whole thing. Now I know for a fact that Miyuki's a cheater. The game never lies. She could not deserve this. Arahara? And then she swoops in. <laughs> Oh, it's happening. It is love in the time of cholera. Oh, that's what that card meant. Do we have a rule for this? Do we have a rule for this? rule for this? Do we have a rule for this? Do we have a lot worse. Like a lot worse. You got lucky. Yeah, she'll like legit love you forever. Congratulations. There are ways. Probably stop now before we get the child support card. Yeah, she looks thrilled. <laughs> she looks super happy. <laughs> this is a huge metaphor. From start to finish. <laughs> Getting married. Fujiwara leads to ruin. That's that's the takeaway, okay. Maybe if you didn't cheat on your, your wife, family of nine kids. I think it's amazing what she managed to accomplish with that. And flashback out of nowhere. Because why not? Kaguya <laughs> wants to celebrate. <laughs> no, this is an opportunity where pettiness might ruin you. I get that, yeah. Or these are sort of weird. You can feel like it creates an obligation for people. I would love to get my fortune read from Fortune Teller Chica. Wait, for real? Is this real? She just wanted to wear that hat. True. Dual nature, true, but also very generic. <laughs> what a life and fortune stuff in this episode. This is real. And then naked, because why not? I believe that. That's an accurate prediction. She's gonna get whatever she wants in life. Oh, they have the same birthday? 
Oh no, a little selfish streak. That's what she was just saying. There are a bunch of staples of this kind of practice. One of them is to give a duality to something so you're never wrong. Like, you're someone who works hard when the situation requires it, but you also need your downtime. You know what I mean? It's like, well, yeah, who doesn't? Or like, you're generally a nice person and can get along well with others, but if you're pushed too far, people will see another side of you. But I think another really important aspect of it is flattery. It's got to come off overly positive. So even if you're talking about faults, it's going to be introduced in a way where it either seems justified or is just a lurking darkness as opposed to the whole personality. Never Nevertheless, I really like fortune stuff. It's come up a bunch in the channel just because it's a chance to reflect, you know, anything that sort of makes the, the unconscious a point of focus, anything that gives a backboard for thought, I think can be useful because you'll start to think about it. You'll hear a fortune and then you will be engaging in a behavior and suddenly the fortune will come to mind, which means at that moment you're reflecting on yourself. Whereas if you had not heard the fortune, it might have just passed right by without any kind of awareness. I kind of want to do this myself. It's number 29th, rule by number two and the moon. I always knew it was number two. You are highly creative, practical, emotional, friendly, simple, and generous person. You enjoy enormous respect at your workplace <laughs> from a melon. But at the same time, you need to check your tendency to behave introvert, selfish, and jealous at times. Look at this website of fortune. You struggle with grammar. Some exciting news from children will lift your spirits. That's actually terrifying. All right, I'll check my tendency to be selfish and jealous at times. Fair enough. Birthday prediction website. I came here expecting compliments and what I got was the website calling me simple. Let's give it a try for fun. Be part of the group. Everything's fine, I'm not bitter. Everything's fine, I'm not bitter. Oh no. She's already in too deep, she can't... Yeah. Better say that now. Wow, that's a lot of details. Virgo number one, you were like it's a sporting event. Oh, he's up late reading about it. That's why he needs coffee. Oh, he's hiding it. Always more than I think it is. They're just so not on the same page. It's a lot of subtext that could be read between the lines if he would only become literate. That's not it, but at least you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. I like this kind of thinking better though, even if it's wrong. At least it's positive. At least some good can come out of it. But yeah, I feel like he's going to be really suspicious of that. Alright, we got a surprise birthday party coming, maybe. Oh, oh, this poor guy. Oh, new, new ending. I guess we'll get the opening next episode. Oh, all of you, your entire body and soul. Yes, that is how you describe a healthy relationship, <laughs> but a really exciting one. This is for the, for the birthday. Looking for him. <gasps> the wieners. I forgot about those. Super crucial. That's really cute. How come I never thought about that? Man, Japanese bento is something else, huh? It's <laughs> just on another level. Squid wieners and heart eggs. Oh, daddy daddy do. I feel like this isn't the actual ending, but like... The lurking president, I see you there. I know I know what you're up to. You're scheming. I don't like it. That was cute. It actually told a story. That felt like a packed episode. This show is funny in the sense that we move in these tiny increments that, that feel like big nothings, but there definitely is a momentum. Like thinking about the beginning of season one till now, they both seem a little bit more giving. Their lines seem to have broadened in, in terms of what they're willing to do and what they're willing to say, perhaps even without them realizing it. You know, it's also changed slightly in my mind is my feelings about Ishigami. His character is sort of transitioning into this just sweet kid who wants the best for everyone. Maybe he was there all along, but I definitely didn't notice it at first. As I watch him more, I, I'm noticing that he's, he's a sweet kid. 